He doesn't, he doesn't like the expansives and the robots. He's more of a scientist scavenger type of player, as it turns out. Now, I do want to point out before we get started quickly that I think our third game today is going to be on IO. I'm late loading in, so hello everyone and welcome to our second game of our third week in our community FFA tournament. This time we've got Rahi, Dermis, Soren Johnson, and Yurand as our players. And Philothanic still here with us, providing commentary on a game that is not starting with many expensive resources. No, not starting with many expensive resources. No scientists, so Soren's going to have to... Um branch out branch out in new things there is one spot that you could found nomad as although there are nukes um there is once one decent spot although it's a bit well i guess it's close enough to water for scavenger in this crater all the way at the bottom right hand corner of the map yeah but once again nukes and you're kind of relying on adjacent mediums there if you're um, so that's, it's some good spots you could put throw down expansive up in the north by this ice iron Thorn is going to take the first sca mound of the scavenger at all. A nomadic HQ has been and then Dermis taking that nomadic spot also good and then we're going to see two expansives in the north yes we are yeah, I mean, the expanses were kind of an easy thing to pick up. You've even got, interestingly enough, an adjacent geothermal vent there for Rahi, which is nice. Obviously, the newer uh, geothermal borehole patent could contribute there. Lots of geotherms in that area, frankly. And two, that can easily be connected to the HQ, which obviously works very well with Superconductor. I just actually really like that location that Rahi has picked up. Yeah, it is a good I think you're a little light on aluminum, and that's it. A little bit light on aluminum. Rahi did go all the way down past the colony to pick up a high aluminum expansive using that shipping bonus for the expansives. Rahi also going to pick up the first bribe claim. Also got the HQ2 first on the strength of crushing everything. Yeah, uh, lots oh, of resources getting crushed by that expansive uh, big footprint. Very far behind. Also HQ2 now. Going to struggle a little bit for car uh, aluminum in the early game, but has two... Metal Mines will be able to link up to his colony and transition out later. Yarand, also HQ2, and surprisingly, the Nomad is lagging out a little bit because... What is Dermis doing? Well, that's the thing. Nomad, I mean, he went for this solar panel at the start of the game. It's about to be nighttime, and so that's about to shut off, which is really going to be a huge problem for him. It was a nice idea, but not a full commitment to it. And so just kind of split his resources up, and that's a very difficult thing to do as a nomad, as Dermis really being punished by his lack of starting resources as a nomad. He did not get to crush almost anything with his found, and that's something you kind of rely on a little bit as a nomad, getting a nice little boost from your crush right, right at the start of the game. So for the nomad in this map, because you do need to buy... Electronics started at normal price, but you do need to buy 20 mm -hmm. of those. So the Nomad should have found it last to get the most cash. Exactly. I now, I don't think Dermis's plan of going into power, like, if you're going to go into power, go into two power, not one. Get, go into power. Get it done. You have to commit. You can't just, the you know, dither about these business. decisions, as it turns out. Soren is going to go into a geothermal plant, currently unprotected. Dermis is going into a second power, but it is at its other HQ. It's not no yeah, JCC. I saw that. Soren's going hard into power two geothermal plants. HQ has been upgraded. That is aggressive, but he does have an okay amount of carbon. I mean he's not he's not doing too bad on carbon. That said, if I were any other player in this game right now, I would have a spy on those medium carbons and they would have been nuked already if i'm being entirely honest here just yeah, well power is not going to last very long yarend has one geothermal brahi one is the first hq3 putting up her Green second and option. third wind turbines the goon is a little bit misplaced there should be in the middle instead of on the end but that end one was built first so a little bit not planning ahead there well yeah, you can argue it should be in the middle there, but given that all of these are, are attached and together, you're not going to get a full defense from placing the goon in the middle. So there is an argument to be made, even with spies on the board, so. that you try and put it on an end, and you put it on the end that people are going to want to hit, and instead of going for that kind of partial defense that might work, might not, you just go for the gamble of, I hope they're going to hit the goon and I get the interception instead. It's... It it's an interesting decision. There goes the first mutiny. Second mutiny on Soren's two geotherms. 
one from Rahi, one from Yaren. Sora's not going to be able to pick up both of them, and that is a problem with going into double Geos that early without buying any goons. Yes, it is. It means that the scavenger is lagging behind both expanses, which is something you never want to be as a scavenger. You always need to be ahead. HQ has been upgraded. You can check the black market. One bribe claim up for everybody. So Dermis and Soren are definitely running behind schedule right now, although Dermis did get to HQ3. Yeah, nice nice move moving up to HQ3 for Dermis. He did get there eventually. His power is falling off pretty rapidly, but he should be able to find something else to make money in. Food is kind of the obvious thing for players right now. We see a lot of farms starting to come online. In particular for Dermis. All right, sorry, Dermis has one. Year End has, I believe, three that are trying to come online and got frozen out by Rahi. Definitely paying attention in this game. She's, she's spreading around those attacks as appropriate. Yeah, that's where Soren and Dermis will be quite happy that it looks like Rahi and Yerand are identifying that the other Ooh. expansive is the most challenging, or the, not the most challenging, the most dangerous. So maybe that'll give Dermis and Soren a chance to catch up. So a dust storm on the way. I wonder how this is going to impact people. Some people might not even notice it's happening. It can be something that's a little... Uh, if you're not oh. listening for the sound effect on the way, you might not spot it. We have a lot of farms How, online. Now. Power is going to be one dollar thanks to Rahu's yeah. wind turbines. That I can true. just about guarantee. Rahi set up perhaps the best. She went into electrolysis reactors, although farms are only going to be half. So I guess it'll be kind of a wash there. Yeah, electrolysis reactors are okay. I am looking at these chem refineries that Rahi has coming online. That's kind of what I was wanting to see once this dust storm was revealed to be on the way, was some more chem refineries coming up from our players instead of farms. That said, farms are making money for those who have it online for about the next one second. And then I think our chem refineries are going to overtake them as the, the valuable building on the map. And of course, glass kilns becoming gradually more valuable as the game goes on and people get upgraded. Those are going to be nice to have, and I imagine that's what we're going to see Rahi move into in just a moment here. Well, if Yaren didn't have Rahi on his radar for being dangerous, being the first upgrade HQ4 is definitely going to put Rahi on Yaren's radar. Yaren is starting to lag a little bit behind here. That power surge on his farms was did a lot of damage, and now with that dust storm they're only making the 58 a second instead of the 80 something yeah not profit. pleasant on top of that year end did make the investment into a pleasure dome Literally. which uh, looks like a good decision this game i mean we've got two expansive players and no robots down so that's that's certainly looking a lot better than the last game where we saw a pleasure dome out of dermis but it is a pretty hefty initial investment compared to any other building costing 40 electronics uh, to put down and of course you here. also want a goon squad and that didn't happen so rahi is going to really enjoy that because she is clearly the leader right now most cash on hand hq4 her opponents are attacking each other, the player number two and number three. She's moving into patent lab, going to pick up some long-term and patent slant drilling. That's good nuke defense. Rahi having some trouble deciding exactly what to do here. There we go, we're finishing up the transitions now. Rahi was only going to have a pair of farms online. She realized, no, that's not good enough. I have to have three. We're talking about food. Which of course, heavily consumed life support resource. You need to have a lot of food production to make money from it. And decides to swap those into the three and just have the double reactor, keeping her from accumulating too much debt from the uh, freighters that are running around. Soren HQ4 also, and Yaren just upgrades HQ4 as well. Soren moving into four farms, wants to take advantage of all of that food money 152 or 141 profits off of those yeah i can't argue with that especially with a dust storm on the way i mean with the dust storm coming there's no need to like 
step lightly when it comes to food. You don't really want to maintain that market with this dust storm on the way. You just want to get what you can while the getting is good and then get out of the market, maybe the move to electronics, to maybe look at some reactors instead. So I really like the going ahead and flooding this market for the time being. My favorite patent pickup right now is Yaren going into carbon scrubbing. Yeah, I cannot fault him for that. Carbon was always going to be difficult this game. Nukes are still $2,000, which I absolutely despise. Yes. And because carbon's difficult and nukes are still readily available, going ahead and grabbing carbon scrubbing is going to secure that market for you later on. And of course, with labs at the colony, with machine shops, a couple of them at the colony, you know it's going to be a valuable place to be. Man, people want this pleasure dome. So there is an argument for... So, if nukes, you don't want to be the first person to throw down those nukes as Yaren decides to do to be yes. to be that first person while there's a little bit of a mad situation going on because once those nukes start raining down it may be a while before they stop especially it's when actually, everybody has a lot of money but no response just yet yeah, not quite yet. It's a little sad for Rahi in particular to get the high water nuked out to a low because it was about two seconds before Rahi picked up slant drilling, which you have to imagine one of the reasons for grabbing slant drilling in this situation seems to be so you can only have maybe two high water pumps functioning and have those be your water. Really efficient use of claims if you can pull that off. And oh. also you could have two high carbons functioning, that kind of thing. Just not going to happen, unfortunately, for this game. She did have a goon squad sitting there she could have put it down on the high water knowing it would be a target but decided to play risky and uh, that's well, what as you said the nukes hadn't been used yet at that point right and so maybe they had just fallen away from people's minds not when thinking about you're it the now leader, the pickups are coming two nukes in a row just purchased when you're the leader you know nukes are going to run down on you though that's true so good bounce for Rahi bad bounce for Yen on that power surge. Rahi going into thinking machines. That's a good pickup because off-world off launches are actually pretty decent. 580 and 42k profit on that oxygen. Rahi's, yeah. only, thanks to that expansive advantage in steel, only 72k, 55k to, six, to uh, put down a off-world right now. Yeah, not too bad at all to go ahead and try and get that building down for almost anybody, honestly. But expansives definitely have the best of it. Could even combo that with a geothermal borehole that Rahi's picking up right now and have a very, very cheap to operate off-world market. They're expensive in power, and so it's really nice not to have to pay that price. Wow, more nukes coming down. That one going to be a lot. Oh, there you go. We're committing very, very heavily to trying to knock out Rahi's water. Well, Rahi is the clear leader. HQ5, but Soren is also an HQ5 with 100k more. Rahi has a bunch of good patents. Rahi purchased three bribe claims, which is a lot easier for us to keep track of than the players individually counting the hexes. But that's reflected in the amount of cash she has on hand, so everyone going for Rahi makes a lot of sense at this point. Oh, it, it absolutely needs to be done. Rahi is pretty well the clear leader of this game. Rahi does have geothermal borehole slant drilling and thinking machines available as patents. Now, Yurin and Dermis weren't slacking there either. Dermis grabbing superconductor financial instruments virtual reality. Meanwhile, Yurin has nanotech and carbon scrubbing. All of these clearly valuable. Bit surprised not to see teleportation go anywhere just yet this game, but that's all right. Fuel's only 87. A Dermis doesn't ship. The expansives have their bonus. But Soren could Soren certainly use the it. most shipping. Yeah, I mean, one a second, 1.2 a second, so that's gonna. It costs what for the patent? 20k? It's gonna be a while before that patent pays off. A little while, but you always have that benefit of getting the resources immediately, which I think is oftentimes a not valued not quite as much as it needs to be when people are discussing teleportation. Three optimization centers online, coming online as it is for Rocky yeah. right now. No. Garen's been in these optimization centers for he has. a while. He's decided that, well, I'm going to lag behind a little bit on these HQ levels. Hope that I don't look too threatening and slowly 
you know, make myself a little bit more threatening with these optimizations, but um, it's true. But I don't like the decision because, enough. frankly, they're just they're sitting there doing nothing right now. I mean, two optimization centers. You need a lot of chemicals to keep those running, and as chemicals we can see right now, good. urine just can't. He does have carbon scrubbing though, so these three chemical refineries that are coming online will be quite cheap to run. Although carbon's pretty low, so that's not too much of an issue anyway. Yeah, re researching some chems would be a good idea. Rahi is still to improve. definitely in the lead right now. Clearly in the lead. She's got good patents. She is starting to get more optimizations than anybody else. She's got a lot yeah. of broad claims. And that said, while she's clearly in the lead, what I'm not seeing this game is a player who has truly fallen very, very far behind and is easy to acquire in particular. So it's going to be more difficult for Rahi this game to exploit that lead and convert it into a true victory. And it gives a lot more time for Dermis, Soren, and Yiren to get their act to together, focus her a little bit, see if they can catch back up because none of them are too far behind. Dermis is gonna be the first one to take a shot. That seems a little bit risky. Aggressive, dangerous. Boneheaded. Bold. Yeah, that's, that's where we're going with that eventually at the end of the day. Oh boy. So, if other people decide to help, then that's alright, but you're saying how nobody's really easy to pick up? Well, Dermis might be the easiest, although he did pay off a lot of his debt, so, so. it's not as bad as it used to be, but it now back down to sea debt again. Yeah, 20,000 auction there, and of course he has eight return of claims left. He hasn't used a single one yet this game, and so uh, he could pick that up if he wanted to. Instead, it is just going to be turned into a geothermal plant. Might like to see Dermis start exploiting his return of claims more effectively, as we did end up with both bribe of claim and auction of tile available this game. Mm -hmm. Certainly increases the value of ending up as a nomadic player, as you can auction a tile or just auction a terrible tile make somebody give it to you for like 10, 12,000 because nobody wants to bid on an absolutely awful tile most of the time. And then just return a claim and turn it into a good tile. And Dermis hasn't been exploiting that yet this game. And I might like to see a little bit more of that out of him. I was just going to say that Rahi moving into a ungoon off world is a bit bold. And then it got frozen right before I interrupted you. So I didn't interrupt you. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, bold is bold is one of those very nice words for that kind of decision. Now, in Rahi's favor, you do have thinking machines operating, and so it's not frozen all that long, but uh, power surge on an off-world market in particular that's undefended, that can kind of draw everybody's attention, and it's quite likely to keep getting power surged for the foreseeable future, so we'll, we'll see how that pans out. Soren is hacking chemical, I mean, sorry, carbon, without having a carbon stockpile. I'm not a fan. He's got a lot of, he's got some carbon production, and Nuke did eventually land on one of his carbon tiles, knocking it down to trace. So it's not even a lot of carbon production. He's both hacking and enhancing his production at the same time. What I will give him is nobody else is running a significant carbon surplus either. So right. maybe he can eventually turn this into something. And in particular, cause problems for Rocky, as Rocky does not have access to carbon scrubbing. And that's definitely still who these players are going to be most focused on, though Yiran is catching up quite effectively. So Dermis' plan to bind the Rahi hasn't uh, hurt him too much. Um, looks like Soren's going to buy into Rahi also, and then maybe they're going to hope that Yerand can finish the deal before Rahi can pick up any of the other three. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that pans out. It is definitely an option for Yerand, and it's. It, or it looks like it will be. I mean, Yerand now has a lot of cash on hand, more than Rahi. Now that Rahi has started buying into Dermis, he's got an off world market begun. It is not defended, but he does have a mutiny set aside to potentially, to potentially use if it gets stolen from him, although that's a really tempting power surge target. So it is true that 
these three players combined all together could potentially be a threat to who still seems to be our leader. Mm -hmm. Though it feels like Yuran's done a very good job staying in this one. The black market is open for business. Yeah, it's still one of the closer games that we've casted in this entire tournament, I'd have to say at this point, and it's not completely obvious who's going to win. The off-world market is finished and awaiting orders. Down. Oh boy. Knocking that, I'm betting that was a medium that got knocked down to Trace there, although regardless of the middle target, it's a nice one to hit because you're hurting the adjacency bonuses in particular. Yuran's just going to switch it up. Those are going to turn into some electrolysis reactors. Teleportation's still on the table, and I, when you're doing production away from your base, that becomes a far more valuable pattern to pick up, potentially. Mm -hmm. oh, another dust storm. We're just... We're committed to those today, as it turns out. Hunter oh, and a food shortage on food at the same time. Not a pleasant thing for those of us who are already in a lot of debt, looking at you, Dermis and Soren. Yep, so, well, Dermis has done his part in attacking Rahi. It is now up to Soren or Yaren to finish the deal. Absolutely. Yaren, 48%, but Rahi... Well, no, actually, Yaren's closer Our to buying out Dermis. How much does Yaren need? Yaren needs 573 to buy out Rahi if he was so going to choose 20 that. more. Yeah. That's, Rahi only needs 150 more, though, 160-ish to get this done, it looks like. Although, with Sorn having one in Dermis, that changes the math just a little bit. That's, that's a pretty close race, all things considered. But now you're kind of wondering, has Yaren gotten him too strong? To Did we leave him there for too long? Mm -hmm. Can we afford to let him have this half of a Rahi subsidiary, and I don't know if either of our other players really have a choice in the matter. Zorn finishing up an off world market for himself. I imagine that's going to be a hunt launching oxygen soon. There this goes. is one of those times where the stock game calculus gets very complicated, and there are more ways to mess it up than there are to do the right thing. Yeah, significantly more. Although I think if I'm Yuran, I'm still looking at Rahi. Like, sold. that's a double off-world subsidiary, and I can have mm, half of it. Right. I'm just two claims. What a payout. Ooh, Soren actually sold out of his stocks. Interesting. That's... I mean, Yaren's probably not going to pick up Soren, so that really yeah. doesn't make any sense from a long-term perspective. Yaren had the option to pick up Dermis, electing not to. Dermis is selling out for some strange Ooh. reason. Maybe hoping that he can get Rahi to change her attention, try and survive a little bit longer. If he gets all this money back, he would set well... <laughs> nope. Nope. That's what I was worried about, selling out. He, Dermis committed to a strategy there, and then um, he did somebody else to finish with it. And, yep, um, and now Soren is buying into Yerand. Yerand is buying into Rahi. If I'm Yerand, yeah, I'm going to continue to buy into Rahi because Rahi is way more dangerous than Soren. Exactly. Is. You're going to ignore the flea bite that is Soren at this point. I mean, Yerand even has a mutiny stored away. Spies are only 10k. I would be checking Soren's <laughs> offworld to make sure that that is defended because I'm pretty sure I can take down Rahi at this point, right? I don't need that much more money, only about 200,000 more, and I'm going to bring Rahi down. That shouldn't be that much of a concern. So suddenly I just want to make absolutely certain that I can also keep Soren down. And I'm kind of curious what direction Yaren's going to go. It is just going to be more power surges onto Rahi. You have the mutinies going back and forth. Yuran does have to, if he's worried about Rahi, he has to save the mutinies for defensive mutinies, obviously. That is one of the big advantages of thinking machines. People cannot efficiently, offensively mutiny your off-worlds, period. Because you'll just take theirs, you get two seconds, or you get two minutes, they get one minute, you're up a whole off-world launch. That's fantastic for you. I will say, ironically, that Dermis' strategy might have worked out in the fact that he was trying to make Rahi not win. The only problem is Dermis has no chance of winning. Yeah, but Dermis was just off to such a rough start yep. at the beginning of the game. I'm honestly impressed he lasted as long as he Black did, if I'm being line. entirely honest. Now, one thing I don't like from your end was this second off-world coming online. It is protected by a goon squad, and so he can kind of get away with it because it's not making him more vulnerable to Black Market. 
but it just felt kind of dangerous as it felt like all he really needed to do to secure victory this game was secure Rahi. Sorin, it doesn't look like, is in a good position to get anything done. I mean, he has had some optimizations getting done this whole time, and that's certainly a positive thing for Sorin. But oh. other than that, there just wasn't a whole lot happening. Well, Garen has the 100%, but well, it went down a little bit. We'll have the 100% again. He's just going to wait. I mean, he's not going to interrupt his launches for that. Nope. Just gonna wait at this point. There's the red button. Just gotta notice that the red button's there. Yeah, he wants to go ahead and take this. There it is. Two full subsidiaries. One of them has been producing for a while and even has an off-world market online. While it's been producing for a while, another one has control of his off-world market. Uh, and this should be easy cleanup for you. And I mean, yes, Soren owns half his stock. Yes, Soren has more money. But the full pry bices are actually going to be very similar. 831 for Yiren. Soren is going to be sitting on 856. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yiren's going to have the advantage of both subsidiaries giving just... Well, now Dermis just went way up. Yeah, those launches start. I mean, Dermis was only low because it, the subsidiary had to build an off-world market. Because subsidiaries like doing that. It might choose to build one more. That's going to reduce its value. But while these launches are going, it's going to be a good subsidiary, no doubt about that. On top of that, as Yiren buys into Soren, Soren's price just gets, you know, Soren's full buy on Yiren just gets more and more expensive. He's still 500,000 away from it. Mm -hmm. Things are really looking quite bad for Soren. Yo, the so question is, Rahi was in such a good place for such a long time this match. What? Could she have done differently? I mean, one obvious thing would be you went for slant drilling but didn't protect your water tiles. I don't know how much of an issue that actually was this game. Take a look at the resource price for water. It didn't ever go super high. Yeah, it didn't feel like a major issue for Rahi most of the time there. Girand was trying to make something of it, but I don't know if it ever really panned out completely. And yeah, Rahi was just getting pummeled constantly that game. Everybody really paying attention and having a good idea. That's what happens when you're in the expansive at its first HQ5. I liked a lot of Rahi's moves this game. I will say there were times when it felt like... Uh, there were maybe some some things that weren't going as optimally as they could have been. Mm -hmm. Just like, for example, picking up Geothermal Borehole, but the Geotherm that was next to her base actually just sat there unused for a very, very long period of time. Minor things like that that can end up having bigger consequences later on if all you needed was a little bit more to push you over the edge. And obviously, once you pick up Geothermal Borehold, you can put anything on that tile. There is no reason not to have that tile. It is just better than most other tiles. And so it's just, it's small stuff like that that we end up having to start nitpicking on at this point once the game right. has gotten this close. And then maybe silicon was another thing. Yeah, small little things as far as setup of her base, patents that you researched. I guess the big thing would be actually buying Dermis. Yeah. It was a tempting target, especially, I mean, whenever that red eye button comes up, it takes a lot of willpower not to just click it. Especially if that person's had a lot of stock in you for a long time. But, yeah, the, the one of those situations where there's really, there's no obvious path that Rahi could have taken to secure a win, and it's just... One of the things that you put up with when you play an FFA. Yeah, it, it's just one of those. There was no super major obvious decision that said, if you hadn't done this, you definitely would have won the game. I will say that I think the single biggest thing that I see just kind of looking through all of this is that it doesn't look like anybody in this game truly respected how short silicon was in supply in particular it's one thing that people actually ignore a whole lot but even with this nomad who had quite a bit of silicon to his name once you've picked up slant drilling with nukes available you can still create 
a bit of a pseudo monopoly for yourself as long as you protect your own tile effectively. And a monopoly like that, if you can get that set up, then that kind of thing can just be so insanely profitable it does win you the game on its own. And it, I think it was possible this game, and if there's one place I would criticize people in general, was nobody really tried to make that happen. And it could have been the edge they needed to go ahead and win out in this fairly even match. That could have been a way for Dermis to claw his way back in to the game from yeah. a slow start. He would have been best set up for it, absolutely. Overall, well played by all our players. Not too many blatant errors other than the early start from Dermis, which we harped on for quite a while. Congratulations to Yerand for the win. Well-deserved victory. Yeah. Had some help yeah. along the way. He did. But still, good job by everybody kind of identifying who do we need to be a problem to. And also, very beneficial for Yerand that neither Soren nor, like, that Dermis didn't completely fall out of things. Because if Dermis had been an easy pickup, Rahi runs away with that game. Right. Right, to come, come back from behind when you're HQ4 and everyone else has been HQ5 for a while only works if everybody else lasts late and there's no early pickups. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely.